Yo, what's going on movie lovers? Welcome back to the movie blog. Today we're diving into the exciting cinematic tapestry of The Color Purple. Directed by incredible Blitz Bazawule, starring powerhouse performers like Fantasia Barino, Taraji P. Henson, Halle Bailey, Delicia Pearl Mpasi, and the incomparable Danielle Brooks. This remake takes us on an emotional journey through a classic tale. I'm your host, Anthony, and I'm grateful to have your time and to be your guide. So let's jump right in. Now, before we unravel the layers of this remake, let's talk about the emotional weight of revisiting such an iconic piece of storytelling. The Color Purple has left a remarkable impression on literature and film history, making this remake a thought-provoking exploration of how it navigates the delicate balance between homage and innovation. I've read the original book by Alice Walker several times, and I've seen the original film directed by legendary Steven Spielberg multiple times as well. Starring luminaries like Whoopi Goldberg, Oprah Oprah Winfrey and Danny Glover, who in that film etched their performances into the timeless cinematic consciousness. It's impossible to ignore the profound impact of the original stars on the cultural and emotional landscape. Whoopi Goldberg's portrayal of Celie, Oprah Winfrey's unforgettable Sophia, and Danny Glover's complex Mr. are not just characters, they're part of the cultural fabric of the color purple. The question looms large. How does this remake navigate the delicate balance of paying homage to these iconic performances while forging its own path? Now, let's dive into the good stuff. Felicia Pearl Mpasi's portrayal of a young Sealy is nothing short of phenomenal, okay? Let's give this woman her credit for beautifully introducing a young Sealy to the audience. Now, she anchors the film from the very beginning and captures the struggles of a young woman in an abusive household. Halle Bailey and Dion Cole add intensity to the movie with their roles as Celie's sister Nettie and father Alfonso, respectively. Did you even know that that was Dion Cole? Like, Celie's dad is a piece of ish and Dion disappears into this role as this character, almost a little too well. Anyway, we know that Nettie is a very important character throughout The Color Purple, and her earliest connections with Celie are pivotal. Halle Bailey does a great job in her performance as Nettie. Her chemistry and performance with Felicia Perlmpazi is heartwarming to watch, and her star shines especially bright anytime she showcases her ability to sing. Speaking of singing, we can't forget how Fantasia Barina effortlessly takes the baton from Felicia in the role of Seely, owning the character and carrying us through some genuinely compelling character development moments. Now, you may know that although this is Fantasia's first feature film, this is not her first acting role. In fact, this isn't even her first time portraying Seely, as she was the star of the hit play as Seely in that adaptation too. Fantasia brings a lot of that experience into her performance here, which adapts really well into this movie. There are so many moments where Fantasia is simply radiant as Seely, whether she's dancing on a record player or singing out in the sun in the fields. Fantasia delivers on all of the complexities of Seely's emotional journey with a grace and care that preserves the core character traits that make this character endearing. Coleman Domingo takes on both the honor and the burden of portraying Alfonso Mr. Johnson. Now, Mista is a problem, and Coleman brings a powerful uniqueness to his performance. Mister's behaviors are just as shameful as ever, and let's just say he performed the role really, really well. Like, it's not easy to watch, but it's what the actor is actually doing in the moment that makes it powerful. I really like the performance of the actor in this role. He takes on a very, very difficult role that requires him to perform some very difficult scenes. Coleman does a great job in the role, but there's some things that are a bit off. We'll get to that in a bit. 
David Allen Greer's performance as a pastor adds a familiar yet excellent touch to the film. His chemistry with Taraji P. Henson, who anchors many emotional arcs as Suge, is thicker than Sarah. The result is a silky smooth presentation of one of America's classic tales and relationships. This musical adaptation brings a symphony of emotions through powerful and provocative songs, creating a captivating layer that enriches the storytelling. And the cinematography, oh my gosh, the cinematography, it shines. There are creative transitions from scene to scene that elevate some of the more emotionally charged scenes, creating moments that linger, like Seely dancing on a record player. Now, with all of those aspects, let's talk about the aspects that didn't quite hit the mark. Coleman Domingo's performance as Mr. is commendable, but there's a missing edge that could enhance the overall tone of the character. The scene between Mr. and Nettie early in the movie feels like it could have dug deeper into establishing Mr. as a true monstrous antagonist. But the movie shies away from being overly dark or diving too deep into the root of that behavior. There's a missed opportunity there, especially with Mr.'s father, played by the remarkable Louis Gossett Jr., to further highlight the generational trauma. Mr.'s character just seems to lack a certain Bite that could make him even more menacing and endearing. The film portrays multiple instances of domestic abuse and they are powerful in conveying the harsh realities faced by Seeley. And admittedly, they're difficult to watch. It would have been interesting to see where that behavior came from in greater detail. Overall, even as a musical adaptation, The Color Purple offers a gripping cinematic experience. The stellar cast, the musical narrative, and captivating cinematography contribute to a moving and emotionally charged revision. This version is sure to satisfy fans of the book, the 1985 film, and fans of the play. This is a triumph in storytelling. I'm giving The Color Purple a resounding 9 out of 10. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this exploration of the color purple. Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. Today, we're absolutely thrilled to be talking to the brothers of the newly imagined color purple. We have Corey Hawkins and we have Colin Domingo. We also have AFCA members Anthony White from New York. Hey, Anthony White from New York City. Uh, thank you both so much. Uh, the color purple. You are both portraying such iconic characters from this beloved story with Mr. and Harpo, right? And now you're rubbing elbows with Steven Spielberg and Oprah Winfrey. So I'm curious, how has this movie changed you as an artist, as an actor, as a performer, as a person, if it's changed you at all? I think I'm still in process to see how it's changing. Because I think that we did the work, the work that we think is meaningful. And yes, we're working with people who are the best in the business and they the, the film is about being in service to our humanity in many ways and about our families and bringing us together and finding some hope and inspiration. We'll be examining what, it, what love is. So I think I'm still in process. Now that the film is starting to get out there in the world, I'm seeing how it's landing on people because I think, you know, Oprah Winfrey wanted to use this film as a, a device of healing. You know, how, how can we heal from our trauma? You know, she said, Color Purple has changed her life. That's the reason why her intention, her, Scott Sanders, you know, Quincy Jones, Steven Spielberg, the whole intention was to populate this with a, a fantastic director and great actors and, and craftsmen in every department and choreographers because they, it's so meaningful. It means the world to all of them that this, a film like this exists for people, for humanity. So it's like, you know, I don't know, it feels fantastic. I, I'm in the middle of it, so I don't really know, but I know it feels real good. Yeah, it's touching the people it needs to touch and affecting the people it needs to affect. And uh, I also think to speak from the other side of it is that like, I'm learning from watching and I'm learning how to uh, just, what, it, what it's te taught me is how to be a better artist, right? Cause I'm watching artists like Coleman, um, not only advocate for his characters, but also advocate for us as actors, mm -hmm. which I think is really important as black actors in Hollywood, um, within the studio system, um, watching Blitz fight for us and our choices and our nuance and our colors and our uh, ups and all of that stuff is it matters. And 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 thank you for showing me how to be a leading man. Thank you for showing 
for for setting that you know example um because it's 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 um it, it, we just don't have we don't have that i mean we don't like an opportunity where you're on a set full of black excellence and um and i just i just think it needs to happen more i just think i think we need more examples of it and we have to lean into it when it when it's successful and uh but that's on us as well and again we have to be the example we have to set the example and and uh that that's how it's also changed me in addition to what he's saying mm-hmm. other in other ways i'm still healing and feeling figuring it out mm-hmm. too you know thank you both so much you both did an excellent job and you brothers can say thank you thank, thank you, you man. <laughs>